<coughs> so my contact with Pranav Dha. Pranav Dha came here first in 1942. I had no contact at the time. He was here for two months or three months. He came back in 1945. And uh, sometime in 1946, I was at the gate, Ashram gate, and Pranav was there and Dakshina Pada was there, his father. So Dakshina Pada asked me, So you have to Bangla Polish giveaway? I said, Shrivinga Amar Baba. I was very young, 10 years old. Pranamda reminded this me after, after 10 15 years. That look right from that day, you were destined for this place. Otherwise, I was a young boy, how could you say Shrivinga Amar Baba? So that gave me a lot of satisfaction. <coughs> My contact with Dada really inwardly developed when I heard that Mother had said that in 1947, when the ashram was attacked, terrible attack, and we are all sleeping in the ashram, right? But I said, Pranav was one of those who stood beside me in the occult world. He was not there physically. He was outside standing and trying to organize the whole thing. But she said in the occult world, he was one of those. Might not be the only, but one of those who was standing behind me. And from that day onwards, mother began to draw Pranamda nearer and nearer to her. I don't remember the day, it might be 48 or 49. <coughs> uh, Pranamda had some problem. And then he was disgusted with himself. He said, I have come here for an ideal and I am not up to the mark, I will go. So he started walking. And uh, Mother did not find him in the playground. So she was, uh, she sent for it to die in Amyala. Find him out immediately. Now they didn't know which side to go, this side or this side. So they just kind of lottery feeling and they said, sorry, go in this side. And they found him near Mare Garden, walking all alone. And they asked him what happened. That I am not worthy to stay in the ashram. Come, come in the car immediately. He brought him back and the mother took him straight to Shrivindu. And Shrivindu heard it. Because Pranamda spoke in Bengali, he was very disastrous himself. For Tikhoita way. Pranamda <laughs> told me afterwards his accent was absolutely like an Englishman. But uh, that gave me a lot of comfort. And then Shrivindu said, <coughs> after seeing him, that this body has the possibility of becoming supramentalized. But he has to overcome all his lower nature and desires, right? If he does that, he is a candidate for supermanhood, right? So, <clears throat> and he said, I will try. I will try my very best. But the first thing that you have to do, Mother told him is that you must come in contact with your psychic being. <laughs> And Shrivindu has given you a present. If you want you and make an effort, you can come in contact with your psyche being. He told me much later that on 
around about 67 or 69, I don't remember the date. Hmm. That prominent became real. She could come in contact with his psychic being when he wanted, but he had to become quiet. If you are feeling irritable or disturbed, then he had to withdraw himself and then he could come in contact with his psychic being. He said that saved me from many things. In uh, 67 or 69, when he came in contact with the inner being, uh, not constant contact, but uh, more or less regular contact, uh, or when he wanted it, he felt a sort of relief because then he could fight his lower nature. Because fighting the lower nature, as Shurabindo says, is an extremely difficult thing here. Because outside you suppress it. Here everything is a, has to be brought to the forward, to the forefront, and then you have to handle it. So he did that. <coughs> then I had a great admiration for Goloka. Uh, mainly because Mother told him told so many good things about him and mother took him in her fold, right? And then when she started playing tennis, I play only Pranab play, right? Mm -hmm. So Pranabha was a partner. Pranabha didn't like tennis. He always, he told me that uh, it's a rich man's game. A man, ball will come and pick up the ball for you. I didn't like this. I wanted and we should pick up the balls, right? And then it was. But if Pranabha would not play, mother would not play. And Pranabha, once he heard his name wrestling, so solo, he didn't tell his mother anything, he just put on a bandage and went and played with the mother. He suffered, but he. He said, well, I will do only that which keep mother happy, right? So I, I really love her, love her, right? And it, of course it was mutual, she loved him very much and he reciprocated like innocent. And uh, <clears throat> as I said, mother brought him close to him. And from August 15 onwards, gradually she brought him nearer and nearer and there were times when he had to spend, but generally he had to spend about 10 hours in the day with her. He used to come in the morning out, but uh, I don't remember the time, and do his exercise, he used to do a lot of exercise, go back at 11.30, have lunch with her, right? At the beginning, uh, before she was in the past, the way, lunch was with uh, Udar, Gauri, Mohan. Uh, and Pranabha. Uh, 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 After Shavinda passed away, Pranabha had lunch all by himself I, uh, with, with the mother, no one, no one else, right? So, for whatever reason, mother took Pranabha very close and gradually the relationship became deeper and deeper and deeper and I became very friendly with Pranabha. There were times when I used to argue with him. For example, uh, the whole group, nobody liked Marjil. They liked Marjil but not Marjil. So they would make and then we would not do it. But Pranabha insisted that we should do it. So then one day he told mother, the mother called me and said, you must do what Pranav is doing, asking you to do, because Pranav is working for, he is doing exactly what Shurabindu and the mother want. She didn't say I, she said Shurabindu and the mother. I said, all right mother, I went back to Pranavla and told him this is what mother has said. If I disagree with you, I will tell you. 
you give me an order after that, I will follow that. Right? Because for me, Mother is supreme. And she has said, so I will do it. So sometimes you have to tell him, and sometimes you have to say, yes, you are right. I will modify it a little bit, right? And so I became very, very close to him. And once I became captain, he trusted me enormously. In fact, he told someone, Titu is my right hand man. When I want some work to be done, I can depend on him. And I think there was a strike in Lake once, right? And immediately he called me, take some boys and go to Lake and solve the problem. And I said, You have not had our lunch. He said, Don't worry, I will send you a lunch. So we went. By that time, Manindra had come and settled the strike. And Pranamda came up to half an hour on his motorcycle, right? To see what has happened, right? And then he was, he was very happy that the strike was solved. But he was so caring, right? And so very, very intimate. And uh, as a result of his intimacy, he used to tell, him, tell me many things. So towards the end, in 72, when I put up that exhibition on Sri right? I asked him that he must help me. He said, no. Mother has given you the word, respite, sanctity, adorasyo. She is helping you. Why are you coming running after me? And then, an aside, when I want to start the exhibition, I was not sure how to go about it. So I went to Satprem. He was sitting on the tennis court, facing the sea. And I asked him. I told him to back down. He turned back and looked at me and said, Are you not ashamed? Mother has given you those three words. Sri is standing behind your head. I can see it. Right? Don't go to anybody. Sit quietly and you will get all the inspiration. So Pranamda said, I'll give you one help. I will ask Vishwari to print the photos. So then I was looking for someone to help me and Jumur helped me. So myself and Jumur, we went to the dark room there. So all the negatives, so there were only 93 or 94 negatives, right? So we picked up the many repetitions, right? And uh, Vishwaritha printed five copies, four copies, you have got them, mm. right? Of the same photo. If he was not satisfied, he would do another one. Mm. So I had a lot of photos, right? So those photos and Pranadha in that way were very helpful. When the exhibition was over on the last day, because I wanted to, it was open on the 12th, and close on 20th at 7 o'clock. I wanted to extend it. Mother said, not even one minute. No extension. So then I asked uh, Shunila to come, Pranamda to come, Satrim to come. Pranamda said, no, I'm not coming. I know it is very good, I'm getting reports. But Shunila and Satrim came. Just two minutes, they walked around. They said, there is nothing to say, Sri is here. Supreme said, Sri is in this room. His emanation has come here. Good. I'm very happy. So then, well, after that, we have been in regular contact with Pranadha, and he was very fond of me because of I used to obey him entirely. If I had differences, I would tell him, but after that, whatever he said, I would do. Then, 
in 1973 from April because I went to, we used to go to Mother Kirit Bhai Mother and myself till 29th March. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, every alternate day, 7 to 7.30, talking about the school and all that. Then <clears throat> on 29th March, Kirit Bhai told Mother that a student has got smallpox in the school. Mother got furious. Why are you coming here? You are bringing the vibrations, right? And then she stopped. Then in April, whole month of April, she met only departmental heads, where urgent work. And from May 20th, or May 22nd, I don't know exactly, Mother stopped meeting everybody. She would not eat. No. So at the beginning, one of the to cajole her, tell her, Mother, please eat. Kumon, Sanya, and they used to all try. Because they had decided that she should take 20 ounces of some food uh, three times a day. She didn't like to eat. Towards the end, Pranavda shouted at Mother, Mother, you have to eat, you have to eat, right? Then when I asked him, that might be the process of transformation is going on, no? So he said, look, I am an ordinary man. So I have to do my duty, because if she had died without eating, right? Oh, Arsha would have blamed me, right? So I, I did my duty with my conscience. So, Pranamda told me that I to go to Tarpatri every year. Told me, go and come back with me. I had to come back on 24th November, 23rd November. He said, you come back early. So I had to go because my property is in. And then I came back on 8th of November. I went on 3rd, came back on 8th. Then Pranamda told me privately, Bhagavad I am not feeling happy. From my outside point of view, it looks to me that she is going to leave her body. We will try our best. feel a lot of pain. But when I see her suffering, agony, then from the 10th of November to 17th of November, she became a little obedient, as Pranamda said, right? You would eat. But then, on the 11th of 12th, she began to get a hiccup, right? And Pranamda felt that it is not a good sign. But she is not eating. So he had to shout at her, right? That was misunderstood, right? It was done not out of anger, but out of love. He wanted her to eat. Anyway, people have misunderstood. And I asked Pramanda afterwards. He said, I had no choice. Because her body was getting thinner and thinner and thinner. With one hand, I could lift her up. She was so light. There was no body weight, right? And then, well, on the 17th, I went out at 6.30. And then, it happened, I was there. Yaruzna came running to the corn house. It was a Saturday. And it was a Kannada field. And I didn't want to see it, so I was coming back. So I asked Narutha, what is the matter? He said, uh, call Pranav immediately. So I said, he is not in his room, in Dara's room. 
So Bhatti was going on cycle, he told Bhatti go and call Pranamka. So Bhatti went to Tara's this house, right? And Pranamka was there, Pranamka went immediately upstairs. He went up and he found that mother's pulse was very, very low. So he sat, the pillows were there and he held the mother and slowly at 7 o'clock the heartbeat was getting softer and softer and softer. At 7.26, 25, 26, she left her body. He said, naturally as a human being I felt sad. But I felt a terrible relief. Because you can't imagine the suffering that she was going through. Well, at least now she is gone over the suffering, right? And a few years before that, when she stopped correspondence and all that, or very little correspondence, Mother said, I am in your heart. Everybody is heart here. All that you have to do is to open out to me. I will give you the answers. And Prabhupada said, since that day, after 67 or 69, I am in contact. Whenever I asked for anything, she was there. She gave me her, her answer. And even if I did not understand, I followed it faithfully. Right? And then I gradually developed the kind of self-control, the kind of mastery. And then, Well, when the old age came, I got a heart attack. And then he went to nursing home for a day or two. Came back. Said, now I can eat a book. And I remember when I went to see his body. Because I knew that he was going. I mean, it was shining. There was a glow on his body, right? I spent as much time as I could around that. At that time, Shanti and all those people were there, Vimora. I also spent a lot of time. And that glow lasted for almost 24 hours, I think. And he, they wanted to bury him, they, like the old father, right? He said, nothing doing. Indian style. Go and cremate me and throw the ashes, right? And I went to the cremation ground and uh, the next day the ashes were there. We went to the Bay of Bengal and uh, whatever people might say about him, that mother trusted him so totally, right? And when somebody uh, complained to mother that mother is shouting at you, uh, so mother said, if it is pranam, don't disturb it. Right? So she had full trust in pranam, and pranam had, had a tremendous love for her. That love need not express in a soft and emotional way, right? He was a strong man, he put it in the way he felt. Well, that is how it happened. But Pranamda trusted me a lot. Uh, because I used to never argue with him. Once mother gave me that instructions that do not disobey Pranam. You can discuss with him but do not disobey. Only once or twice he modified a little bit what I said, but otherwise I followed him faithfully, right? <clears throat> when mother was not eating towards the end, in the last few days, uh, many people complained to mother uh, that mother is shouting at you and he is not, he is uh, trying to force you to eat. Mother said, don't interfere between me and Pranav, right? Let Pranav do what he likes. 
uh, what he feels is right for me. Don't interfere, don't intervene at all, right? And so after that, everybody stopped, right? Although inside, uh, they were complaining, but some, uh, as you say, one gentleman, right? And, but uh, otherwise, uh, most people knew, because they knew two things, that mother loved Pramodha enormously, and Pramodha loved the mother enormously. And she trusted him fully, and he trusted her fully.